This week we're taking a look at what's basically the Swiss Army knife of watches. In addition to the typical chronograph and timer and alarm that a lot of digital watches will come with, uh, this one also includes a dual time zone, uh, a thermometer, a digital compass, uh, and an actual LED flashlight. Not just the backlighting, but an actual flashlight built into this watch. Uh, this week we're taking a look at the Nixon Baja. Take a look. So I think every watch collection needs to have a beater watch, and a beater watch is basically a watch that you wear when you're afraid to wear all of your other watches. Um, for me, probably the most important aspect of a beater watch is it's a watch that is inexpensive enough that you don't mind breaking it in case you know, you're doing something that normally you might scratch your watch or, or drop it or break it. Um, additionally for me, what I look for in a beater is something that uh, can be used to do a lot of different tasks. Um, having a nice uh, timer and chronograph on it is a great feature. Um, having nice active backlighting is good. Definitely you want to have something that's waterproof. Uh, and as mentioned in the intro, this week's Nixon Baja has all of those features and many more. And it does fit the bill for being a really inexpensive watch. I was able to pick this one up for a great price on eBay and even on Amazon they have these ones uh, listed for just an incredibly reasonable price. I believe Nixon has is no longer selling this particular model uh, from their website. They've sort of replaced it for the Nixon unit, which is a very similar looking watch, and that one comes in some more um, stylish case options. Um, as near as I can tell, the primary difference between the Baja and the unit, in a, you know, other than the actual um, case uh, colors and uh, materials that it's made out of, um, it comes on, usually the unit comes on a different strap than this one. This one has sort of a unique strap on it. Uh, we'll get into that as we go into the review. Um, but the main difference, I think, is that the unit does not include the LED flashlight that this one comes with. This one actually has a little LED flashlight. So not, it's not like the backlighting is really bright and that is enough to see things by. It actually has a, a little LED flashlight built into it, um, which is surprisingly useful. Um, I find myself a lot of times putting on this watch at night after you know I'm getting ready for bed uh, because I have little kids and sometimes I got to sneak into their room while they're sleeping and that gives me a great little opportunity to, to kind of see things. Um, but let's go ahead and jo go through the review and yeah I'll talk about all the different features of this um, really great practical little watch. Um, it's maybe not the best looking watch that I have, so I definitely don't wear it for its style, um, but as far as functionality, uh, it's, it's hard to top. So let's go ahead and jump into the review. All right, so here's our first look at the watch. Uh, as you can see, it's a rather large watch. It's about a 50 millimeter wide and 16 millimeters tall, according to Amazon's website. Uh, it's a custom polycarbonate case, uh, so it's not metal, but it's actually pretty light. It's got four of these pushers on it, which are pretty easy to use. Uh, and they control the many functions of the watch. The band is very unique. It's a nylon band. It kind of looks like it's made out of almost like a seatbelt kind of material, which actually turns out to be pretty comfortable. And it's attached to the watch very securely, kind of like a NATO strap, but a little bit different. As you can see, it doesn't have normal spring bars in there. Uh, it's got these screw-in pins, so it's very secure, um, highly unlikely that the watch will fall off the strap. And rather than a typical buckle closure, it actually uses a Velcro system, which I'm not sure why they did that, but um, it seems to work pretty well. I haven't had any problems with it, and overall it's, it's actually a very comfortable watch to wear despite the size. Um, because it's polycarbonate and not uh, stainless steel, it's actually fairly light, and you don't even tend to notice uh, that it is on there. Um, also, the watch has a 100 meter water resistance, so this strap is completely waterproof. The watch is waterproof. Um, it wouldn't be any problem going swimming or getting it wet. Take a look at it on the wrist. Uh, as you can see, again, I have about a seven and a half inch wrist, so it doesn't look uh, too huge. I mean, for a digital watch, um, it seems like you can get away with the larger sizes. Um, 
you know, again, I'm not that sold on the looks, and I, I didn't, you know, it's not a watch that I bought because I think it looks cool. It's, it's more something I got for the uh, features and the functions that it comes with. Um, again, it's, it's a pretty tall watch. You can kind of see from this angle. And the crystal appears to be, I'm guessing it's uh, an acrylic crystal. It's got a little bit of a doming on it. It's not like a, a matte plastic or anything like that. It's actually uh, pretty solid. And you can see it, it does catch a lot of reflections. Um, but it seems to be pretty high quality. Uh, haven't gotten any scratches on it yet. But let's go ahead and take a look at the features of this watch because that's what I think we're here for. Uh, so here's just the typical screen. You can see it's got the date up top and the time. And then if you hold down uh, this button on the main screen, you're going to get your temperature. Um, in order to get an accurate read on the temperature, you do have to set the watch down for about 10 minutes uh, or so. Yeah, otherwise, it's going to pick up your body heat and it'll show much warmer. As you can see, it's registering pretty hot right now. It wasn't quite 76 degrees when I was doing this, but because I had been wearing it, it had my body heat in there. So this is not like something you can just check the temperature um, whenever you're wearing it. It's more like if you're camping or something and you want to get out and get an accurate read of the temperature, you set it down and then take that. Um, hit this one, you can check the second time zone. So I've got this one set to Japan time. And uh, yeah, so you can set it to whatever second time zone you want. If you hold down long enough, it will switch to the second time zone and keep that one up there. And it shows you the time zone, time and date in the second time zone of the year, which is actually very handy because as you see that was Japan time and it was showing that it was 1.30 uh, in the afternoon tomorrow. It has an alarm, which uh, again, very handy. I use that a lot of times to wake, wake myself up if I need to set an alarm or to remind myself of something. Chronograph function, of course, um, you know, pretty typical there. Um, I like this, the numbers on the dial. They're very large, pretty easy to read. And then again, with the nice backlighting, uh, you can read it anytime you want. To reset the chronograph, you hold that uh, lower pusher down and it will reset it. Moving on to the next feature, we have a timer. So you can use this to set the timer to anything you want, um, you know, up to hours, minutes, whatever. Um, yeah, I'll use it if I'm cooking something and I want to remind myself to go check it. Um, or just if I, you know, if there's something coming up that I need to remind myself of, it's pretty quick and easy to set. Uh, so yeah, so I, I find myself reaching for this watch a lot more than I thought I would. It's not something that I typically wear that much, again, just because it's not like a stylish thing, but a lot of times even just doing chores and stuff around the house, I'll put this on just for these extra features of being able to uh, time things or to get out the chronograph. Um, you know, sometimes I'm practicing sermons and I want to see how long that's going to uh, go for, so I'll use it to time that. So it's got a lot of uh, a lot of uses for that sort of stuff. Um, finally, it's got a compass on it, which you know is kind of cool. I don't know how often I'll use this. Um, I do live in California, and so sometimes uh, you know I'll go to the beach and I'll try and figure out if I'm at a south-facing beach or a west-facing beach. Um, but you can see that the compass seems to be pretty accurate, and it does change as you rotate it, as I'm doing here. So I'm facing south right now, but. If we go back over this way, we get a little bit more towards the southeast. And yeah, you even get down to the, uh, the degrees. Again, this is more of like a, a hiking style watch, I think. So a lot of these functions are designed with that in mind. If you're hiking or camping and you're off the grid kind of, you know, you can get all this stuff on your cell phone. Uh, but it's actually pretty cool to have a, an instrument on your wrist that can uh, measure all of these things on its own without relying on an internet connection. Um, the watch has all of these functions contained within it, and that's what you get. Um, now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the lighting on this, which you can see that light in the lower left part of the screen, that little white uh, section. That's the LED light. To activate it, you got two steps. First, you've got to turn on the backlight and hold down the backlight button, which will turn on a little flashlight icon. Once that icon has been activated, you can turn on the flashlight by pressing either of the uh, right side pushers, the top one and the bottom one. One will hold the light on as long as you're holding it, the other one turns the light on for a few seconds. And that concludes all of the many features on this watch. Let's go back and wrap up the review. All right, so that's been my review of the Nixon Baja. Um, as you can see, I'm coming to you from a slightly different location today. Uh, some of you might be wondering why I'm sitting in a leather seat outdoors in very cold weather. We can actually check exactly how cold it is because I have my Nixon Baja here set off to the side so it's been tracking the temperature. So let's take a look. 
yes, we're down to about 50 degrees. Uh, but the reason is, is basically uh, everybody's sleeping in the house, and I was looking for some place to film a quick uh, watch review while I'm staying up late tonight. And I looked outside, and for some reason, my parents have a giant leather chair sitting in front of their chimney. So I thought, hey, that's a cool spot. And here we are. But that has been my review of the Nixon Baja. Um, again, this is you know what I use for a beater watch, and I think a, a beater is a, a handy watch to have. Um, it's something that I'll use, you know, if I if I'm exercising and I need to time something, or you know, I find myself pulling out a lot for just using it as a timer or a stopwatch to time various things. Again, I use the flashlight feature on it all the time. Um, I even pulled out the compass feature a couple times, something I didn't think I would use very often. But um, you know, I think as I mentioned in the review, uh, I live near the ocean, so. Uh, we have south-facing beaches and west-facing beaches uh, in this part of California, so sometimes I'm wondering, you know, which beach I'm at. <laughs> You'd think I would know that by now, but, uh, you know, it's, it's always fun to be able to pull out your watch and kind of see uh, which direction you're facing on the compass. Um, kind of getting obsolete with smartphones nowadays, uh, but, you know, I could see if you're out hiking or something in a place where you don't get cell signal, that could come in handy and occasionally I have gotten to go on some hikes uh, back in Japan and uh, rural Japan there's a lot of great mountains to climb uh, so I look forward to taking this watch with me on some of those hikes as well but uh, yeah thanks for uh, for checking out this review let me know what you use for a beater watch if you have one um, you know I think I think kind of with beater watches the um, again the, the main thing is it's, it's a watch that you don't care if you uh, if you break it or scratch it, so I'm sure a lot of people will have much nicer watches. If your budget for watches is much higher, you know I hear a lot of people. You know, if you've got luxury watches, um, really expensive high-end Swiss watches, your beater watch might be something like a Seiko SKX, uh, which you know for me would be one of my more expensive watches that I would own. So I would not use that as a, a beater for me. Um, you know, this one that I was able to pick up for less than 50 bucks, nice digital watch. Um, that's more my style for a, a beater. But uh, let me know what you guys use. And yeah, until next time, hope you guys enjoyed the, the review. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in this watch, definitely uh, search around for it on eBay, search around for it on Amazon, see what it is that, uh, that you can find. I'll leave some links to it below in the description. But until next time, thanks for watching. And yeah, we'll see you later.